on this episode, I'm going to make this two-piece crankshaft out of steel round bar. Some of you may recall, back in episode 22, I made a one-piece crankshaft. Well, actually four of them. And now seeing how many of the other parts have come along, I thought I could do better, so I thought I'd give it a go. This time making what I'll call a two-piece crankshaft. So stick around if you want to see how it turns out. Welcome to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a three and a half inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. So today I'm starting work over at the horizontal bandsaw. The material I'm using is 40mm mild steel round bar. Ideally I'd be using a freer cutting steel, but mild steel is more cost effective and I keep a length and stock. So that's what we're going to use. For the material cut, it's time to head over to the lathe. The first job will be to rough out one end of the crank. For work holding, I'm using the three jaw chuck. This will work great for the first operation, but we'll be switching to something with better concentricity later. To rough this part out, I'm using a TCMT insert with about a 1mm depth cut on each side, so 2mm off the diameter. That's pretty aggressive for a lathe this size, but it seems to work. The good thing with this style of insert tool is all the load is pushed back towards the chuck. This seems to allow a heavier cut. These also have great longevity, and I run them till they won't cut anymore. As this end of the crank's nearing completion, I switch to a chamfer tool and clean up the shaft corner. After this I'll finish the step feature on the shaft, then move to cutting the crank slot using a parting tool. The cutting tool is aligned with the end of the part and zeroed on the digital readout. This provides a reference for making the cut. As with any parting operation, I've slowed the lathe down and I'm applying cutting oil with the brush. If you want to learn more tips on parting off, check out my video, Parting Off 5 Secrets to Success. I'll pop a link up in the top right hand corner. With the slot half cut, it's time to flip the part over and do the other end. For this I'm going to switch chucks to the ER32 collet chuck. As I've mentioned in the past, a collet chuck has far better concentricity than a three jaw chuck. And given we're flipping the part, we need to make sure everything's concentric. The downside with collet chucks, they're limited in size. So that's why I started with the three jaw chuck. I now have the collet gripped on the finished shaft. And I'm going to repeat the process of roughing out as I did on the other end.
right now I have both ends complete, I can turn my attention back to the centre slot. Once again I'm using the parting tool, and removing the central material until I end up with about a 15mm shaft. The centre is actually going to be sacrificial, and once we have the second piece of the crank and the machining complete, we'll be cutting it away. The next step is going to be to take this over to the mill. I'm going to be using the rotary table to aid in cutting the counterweight profile. This is one of the areas where the one piece crank didn't quite live up to expectations. As it was too weak in the centre, I had to cut the counterweight profile by hand using a hacksaw and a file. And this led to each of the crankshafts looking slightly different. So in this remake, I'm keen to utilise the mill to make the shaping process repeatable. But before we get to that, I've got to drill a hole. This is where the second piece of the crank comes in. I'm going to press the crank pin in and secure it with a weld, leaving my sacrificial centre section in place until that's complete, so the alignment stays true. This removes my concerns about a three piece crankshaft, which is far more difficult to line up. But before we get into pressing in the crank pin, I need to do some shaping. So I'm using a 12mm roughing end mill to cut the counterbalance profile. Once I've made the rough cut, the rotary table comes into action. I'm rotating the part 13 degrees, and this will provide the tapered shape of the counterbalance. Once I've done this on one side, I'll repeat it on the other side. At this point you also notice I switch and cut from the front, and that's to avoid climb milling. And although this is always important, in this particular setup, I'm trying to avoid any undue forces. And that's one of the reasons I've gone for the roughing mill, as they tend to have lower cutting forces in my experience. With that complete, the next job is to head over to the bench, where I'm going to clean up the cut with a file. Obviously this could have been cleaned up with a standard end mill, but once again I was concerned about cutting forces, so I just opted for a little bit of light filing. Once I've finished cleaning up the part with the file, I press in the pin using the bench vise. I missed catching this on camera, so you'll have to take my word for it. But let's head over to the welding table, and see it get welded in. The welding process I'm using here, is TIG welding, which is ideally suited for the task. Another alternative to this would have been to silver solder it in, but given I've got a TIG welder sitting here, it's faster for me to use that. The main thing to note here is the pin was a press fit, so this is just securing it in place. Obviously if the pin had been any looser, this wouldn't have been anywhere near as successful. Once the part had cooled, it was back to the bench for a bit of filing, and I removed a bit of additional material from the counterbalance around the crank pin. I did this post welding to avoid burning out an edge. Once I'd done a bit of finishing, it was time to cut out the sacrificial centre. For this I just used a hacksaw, and then finished it with a file. The main consideration for making this cut, was clamping on the pin. As you're removing the centre that kept the part rigid. Obviously the part will still be rigid enough for the intended use, but miss clamping it could have easily bent it. And here we have a side by side, of the one piece and two piece cranks. You'll notice the counterbalance of the two piece crank is thinner, and what actually happened with the one piece crank, is it developed a taper in the centre section, and this led to them being thicker on one side than the other side. This was really caused by the eccentric cutting of the one piece crank, which is completely avoided in my two piece method. The only real problem with this method, 
as it actually turned out successfully. So now I need to make three more. Oh well I guess there's worse things. And the great news is these things only take a couple of hours to make. Not a day each like the one piece cranks. So too bad I didn't come up with this idea the first time around. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video please like, subscribe and share. And of course if you missed episode 22 where I turned the one piece crank, give it a watch. It was quite exciting. Eccentric turning certainly isn't for the faint hearted. That's all for now, catch you next time.